Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. So hi, everyone. This is Ted Thomas, and welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk. Now, I'm into creating wealth, and of course, when I talk to audiences, no matter where they are, whether it's on the platform or here on the podcast, I say to you, look, I'm not the only guy that knows stuff. I just know and specialize in tax lien certificates and tax default of property. So I'm going to always cover that, some of that on my podcast, but I'm very lucky to have guests, and my guests are all experts. And so today we're going to talk to Molly Grubb, and she's going to give us some insight, and I hope she'll give us a little female insight as well as a male insight into not only holding on to money, but staying out of the risk business, and maybe even when you get your business built up, thinking about how to sell it and things like that. So Molly, can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine, Ted. Okay, welcome aboard, and uh, where are you today? I am in Cowtown, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. Is it really called a Cowtown? Is that what they call it? It's It's not Cowtown anymore, but it used to be, yes. (laughs) Oh, I've I've been there a few times. I didn't know it was called Cowtown. How about that? There used to be a bunch of farmers here. Oh, oh, what's wrong with farmers? That's good. Without them, you can't survive, right? (laughs) Yeah. Okay, listen, let's, let's talk about you for a few minutes, Molly. Lay a little foundation, if you will, and so that people understand who you are, why you're here, and what you do for your clients, because I'd like you to pass some of that on to my clients. Sure. Uh, a brief resume, I'm a recovering actuary that was raised as a business owner at the young age of five. So I'm an, I'm an old soul and a young body, because I saw what it was like when my family was able to build a multi-million dollar practice, or manufacturing company. I also saw what it was like when they tried to exit and use the people they knew rather than the experts they needed and also treated it like a transaction rather than a process. And they lost everything, their home, their RV, their farm. They lost it all. That's right when I started my firm and I knew exactly who we needed to target and that was family business owners. And But I also saw the contrast to that. I saw what it was like when someone did build a dynasty and how they blessed our family. Um, That was my first money memory at the young age of four. And I can get into that story a little bit. Uh, that's what my TED Talk is going to be about next month. That's really what we're doing. You're going to do a TED Talk next month? Really? Yes. That's your, You have to be selected for that, right? A big deal, right? Yeah, a little bit. Wow. Oh, how long is a TED Talk? It can only be, we're going to limit it to 12 minutes. Yeah. Bang. Wow. You've got to be good, right? Oh, well, wow. That's the idea. We'll, we'll find out if it is. But well, you can practice now if you want. This is great. Oh, dear God. <laughs> Yeah, I'll save your audience the grief. Oh, okay. All right. And okay, so at a young age, you learned uh, about business, good and bad. Absolutely. Yeah, I was thrown right into being a receptionist to working trade shows to, I worked all components of the business. And I also know, understand what it's like to not be able to meet payroll and then not, not, not be able to, just those risks that keep you up at night. But then on the flip side, we'll take those family vacations to Disney World and all across the country, even Maui three or four times. I understand that the, what the risk that goes into owning a business, but also the blessings that you get to have. You actually get to live a really fulfilled life. And that's all money really is. And people, everyone goes after the result. And oh, they forget about the passion, following the passion and building out the revenue silos, the, building out the value to match that. When you have passion and value together, that's what builds a dynasty. That's what brings you the money and the, the things that you're looking to embellish in your life. Um, and I was raised very religious. And that's, that was the one thing that really concerned me as I was breaking away from understanding how I was raised versus being able to truly help people is there's constrictions either from a religious aspect or educational or just your community, your family that can there's this unspoken belief system that having money could is bad no one says it they all want it this it's almost like an honor a badge of honor that people wear when they come from humble beginnings and i I just think differently i saw what it was like when someone came in and bought our house back from us for us and took us to disney on this private jet and bought us a brand new van because we were gonna lose everything because my sister was so sick the insurance default on us so I, I understand if you are able to build a dynasty enough to protect your family, that you can also help as many families as you want. And, and being able to do that every day for people is just the greatest blessing. 
Yeah, and so tell me, uh, uh, did you grow up on a farm or something with your, your parents? Or had they lost it at that point, or was everything still okay? How, how did well, that I grew up in the country. We had a little one-acre homestead. We had anything from chickens to ponies to about a quarter of the acre was all of our food that we grew um, because we didn't have enough growing up. It took us probably about maybe eight or ten before I understood that maybe going to fast food on a regular basis was a thing. Um, so it was normally a treat beforehand. Um, but we just made it happen. We went out west. We took a three-week vacation out west in a pop-up camper. And I'm the youngest of six kids, so there's eight of us in this tiny little camper. But it was just, we just scrapped it together and, and had a, an amazing time. We even had a basketball court and a baseball field. Did, did you say so, eight, eight of you in a camper? Eight of us in a camper, yeah. For sure, everybody loved each other, right? Oh, the fact that we made it back and no one was killed or injured was somewhat of a miracle. <laughs> but, <laughs> Kids in a camper, I can't believe it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, at least it was a vacation, right? Yeah. It was, yes, yeah. it was phenomenal. So that was good. All right, so tell me, how'd you get into finance and financial planning and all these things? How did you get into those things? I told you in my first money memory, being able to be swept by a multimillionaire in his arms at the young age of four. I saw what struggle was like. I saw those moments in the hospital where uh, we would spend hours on end and just pray that the, the parking agent would wave us on so we could just get a, a meal rather than eating the stale fries out of the, the van. So at the young age of four, I saw this completely different spectrum. This guy just had infinite amount of wealth to be able to just see the needs and just take care of it without any questions asked. And so I've always explored that component of my life and really wanted to help people end on an individual basis. I'm a nerd by trade, so I think very left brain. So I went to school and got my degree in actuarial science. And for those of you that have no clue on what an actuary is, that's because they don't actually have communication. They don't know how to talk to people. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I say I'm a recovering actuary for a reason. There's communication skills I'm constantly working on. So you're doing great. Yeah. Someone that can't talk, you're really doing a good job. So okay. keep it up. Keep it up. <laughs> but really what you do um, is assigning dollar value to risk. So you'll see these nerds in insurance companies or casinos or anywhere where someone needs to quantify risk from a numeric standpoint. But I found that I couldn't help people individually, and that was I just needed that. I saw that all the way through my life and being able to just – be able to bless people. I, I wanted that selfishly, that reward of seeing that go full circle. And so I knew that I had to make a, a shift and, and I started helping people individually and it grew into the, the monster I've created today. Tell us about what you created today. And I need you to express yourself in how that was for a woman to do that because 63% of my clients are women. Okay. If uh, you know anything about my industry, it's extremely male dominated. So to say that I did not face adversity because of that would be a phallus. That's why I left the banking industry is because I was promised a position and I was the top banker of over 400 agents consistently over two years. And it went to an outside advisor, of course, was male. And the last compliance officer I dealt with, and that's why I left my broker dealer and, and just went completely independent. He was discriminating again from a, a compensation standpoint. But yeah, there, there was definitely those moments. But the weird thing about my industry is as much as I, from an employer aspect, got some adversity there, women really want to work with women. So it's been really a blessing at the same time because I, there's a, been a gravitation to seeking out very, what is really few in my industry. And what, I've, what we've created is, is something like I haven't seen anyone else really do it because I've just seen it from a needs perspective because I have a really unique perspective growing up in the family business, being blessed by a dynasty, and then also just working with family businesses. And I found that what we've essentially created is a virtual family office. So just think, go back 50 years ago, even before technology existed, in order to have a family office, what that really meant is a group of professionals, attorneys, business managers, financial advisors, accountants, you name it, all working for one family. And that's all they do is work for this one family. So you can imagine that you need a lot of money for that, right? A so lot. A lot. Half a billion or a billion more net worth is where that is 
a fit. But the problem is, in, in today's world with technology, companies that, families that have three to 50 million in annual revenues in their business or maybe net worth, they need what a family office provides. They just, it doesn't make sense from an economic standpoint to pay for that. So we've created a virtual family office. So we have experts all across the, really the world that we tap into as needed for our particular clients. And of course you have it from the wealth side, but really what we do is we help free up their time, free up their money so that they can live the life that they want. Because most business owners become employees of their business. That's the problem why they can't grow is they created this monster and they feel like without them, the business won't really work, right? Right. That's because that's the way they designed it. And the truth is it doesn't have to work that way. It's really a stock. So if you start treating it like a stock and investment, then you can have multiple businesses and you can have all this cool stuff. And even alone, just working with some of the experts that I utilize for my clients, I reduced my work time by half in the last six months. So I'm only working four to six hours a day max, three to four days a week and making even more money than I am in the prior month consistently. And it's, so it's all about having to create automation systems from a logical standpoint. So that's what we help us on the technical side, building those systems up, um, freeing up the time from that, constantly monitoring that, and then looking at where wealth is locked up in the business, so freeing that up. And then we're also then putting a stake in the ground. Okay, you're here. Where are you going to end up? When is this thing going to actually sell? Because we all, there's an exit. You either plan it or God will for you. So the question is, do you want your, to pass that, that wealth to your family? Or do you want it to be worth the dirt that you're buried under? That's up to you on how that decision is made. And we prefer you passing that wealth down. And you don't have to be 70 years old to sell your business. I've, my, two years ago, I sold 70% of our practice. Is it because oh, it's 30% wow. of our revenue. And we're going through another sale right now. And just because we really want to focus on family business owners. So we teach, you got to have value. Part of that has three legs, freeing up time, freeing up money. But then within that, building up multiple revenue silos. Because you don't know, let's say McDonald's, if all they sold was hamburgers, maybe people don't like hamburgers anymore and they want fries. So now you can't, McDonald's shuts down because they're not selling fries anymore. So there's multiple revenue silos. And so we have about five or six different ways that we can make money. Every business owner should have multiple ways that they make money within their company, but you got to be careful with that. And that's what, that's why we're having to do some of the sales is we need to be really narrowly focused on our ideal client because what we do is so full service. It's pretty time consuming. Yeah. So you actually go pull the experts off the shelf. So you've made uh, contact with a lot of people so that when you need an expert, you just pull the expert in and then, the client gets to take advantage of that, right? Yeah, only the best of the best, though. I mean, you only come to us when you, you want the best of the best. I so see. That's, that's, yeah. Okay, so you're an overall manager of all of these other people? But a quarterback, yeah. A quarterback, yeah. okay, that's a good point. I guess I should have yeah. something, football, right? Over in Iowa. That's what they do in Ohio. Football. Buckeye country, so. Okay. Right, well, I, I would have got a sign and put it up. I forgot, okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I live close to the Florida Gators, but we won't bring that no, up. That's, no, we won't. That's no. okay. We both lost. If I problem. talk about that, then that's the end of my podcast, right? Right. Yeah, by the way. So, uh, goodbye. That's it. I don't follow it that close, but my assistant is in the next office, and she probably heard me talking too loud anyway, so she's a big Buckeyes fan, just so you know. Oh, I love her already. Okay. But we'll, we'll love her already. Her okay. losing Urban. Oh, that's a good thing to say that, because she's the boss around here and tells everybody what to do. you got okay. the Yeah, you're good. All right, so you're the you're not a financial planner. You're a, really a wealth manager, is what you're telling me. Is that pretty close? If you could quantify as that, now be careful. Like we use wealth management as a tool to support everything else that we're I wasn't doing. Thinking legally, I was just thinking. Yeah. Just even with the wealth management part, we're only one to seven percent that practice all the fundamentals of wealth management. Because most people focus on investment consulting, which you can go to, you can freaking go online and get investment advice for a fraction of the cost that you would go to maybe like Edward Jones or something like that. Getting some of that advice is better than others, but where most people lose their money is not because the market went down 40%. It's because they didn't plan properly for their health, or maybe they went through a divorce and didn't have assets properly protected, or that maybe it's a lawsuit. All those things can, is what destroys wealth. And so that's really what we focus on is that asset protection, ways to free up more money. Because honestly, 80% of all business owners have 90% of their wealth tied up in their business. 
Exactly. And that's what happened to my parents. They had literally all of their wealth tied up in their business. So when it when that failed, there was nothing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. 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 So let's let's speak to some of the women that listen to the to the podcast and tell them where to start and give them a few steps, give them a few hints of where they should what they should be thinking because they're interested in that. Women are always more interested in security and uh, predictability than men are because men are we're invincible. We're just going to be here forever. Of but the women know that they might have to spend a few years by themselves. It would be nice to have some some assets, so to speak. Okay. Keeping it as general as possible. So I, I like to use my dynasty formulas. It really starts with purpose. That's the first place. I know it sounds basic and fluffy and airy, but honestly, you, you'd be surprised on how most people get that completely wrong and why they just always go sideways. So it's really understanding what that purpose is, because that's what's going to allow you to work those long hours or just constantly be okay with falling on your face a few times because you have this greater thing that you're working towards. I know my purpose. It's, it is a little fire that's inside my soul. And when you find it, what that really is. Because then what that, when you have clarity of purpose, then your ability to mirror that up with the value that you bring people is, it's just, it, the, the two just go hand in hand. Um, so I've already stated that earlier is looking at your time. Where are you spending your time? So when I sit down with the client, I'm looking at, wow, awesome, toggle, T E L. Um, it, it will give you all the different steps to being able to um, find out where you're, what, how you're spending your day. Are you spending your day checking emails at the very first thing in the morning? So you only get one glass of water a day, right? So if you spend all your energy, tiny little wins, and you're not actually making money, then so, so that's the, the mindset that we try to put people in. How can I just constantly be just thinking through that? And then, so that's all, that toggle resource is on our time saving resource that your audience can download on Build Your Dynasty book or slash TED. So on our, once you're done listening to this, what would be great for a lot of your audience to be able to save some time, we gave, we're going to give you guys a resource. It's called buildyourdynasty.com forward slash TED, T-E-D. And on that resource, you'll be able to see different resources like the toggle that I just mentioned. The other resource that's going to be on there is SaneBox. Just emphasizing the email issue, um, it saved me personally five hours a day, uh, or not, not a day, a week. So just imagine, most people get this wrong. They say, my hourly rate is $300. For me, if I go get a contract for $24,000, and it took me three hours to do that. What is my real hourly rate? Yeah. It's not three hundred dollars. It's eight thousand. So that understanding what your true hourly rate is really allows you to understand what do I need to delegate? Me doing my own taxes is I can pay someone a few hundred bucks rather than that, so I can go get that eight thousand dollars contract, right? And so that being able to free up your time using those resources. And also thinking through the importance of you being able to generate more revenue. And then look at your platform. For us, we created, for the different revenue silos we have, and I'm just giving these as ideas. I mean, we created, uh, we have a book. We have, within our, we have a wealth management division. We have an insurance division. We have real estate consulting. We have about five to six different ways that we add value to people. The more we can add value, the more money they can make. But those are just things I want your audience to really just think through, map out the different ways that of what they're currently doing that they can make even more and add even more value to their clients, which then adds more value to you personally. But you can, I say all that, but unless you actually stress test it, make sure it's not going to fall apart on you um, on a continual basis, none of it's going to work. So that's probably the most important component throughout all this is as you're building this out, Constantly go back and make, and see what's going what's going wrong. Constantly test those theories. So I have a lot of clients that are women, and they've been in they've been homemakers for a lot of years, and the kids are the kids push them out to work, and now they get involved with me, and they have this whole business to do because what they do is they might come out to Cuyahoga County or even Franklin County, and they're going to buy something, and then they're not only going to buy it, but they're going to maybe even repair it and sell it. And there's a whole bunch of new jobs here that they just acquired that, oh my goodness. And so that takes a little bit of experience. It'd be nice if you could always have someone to guide you, but we guide them into the buying and the selling, but they have to do this on their own. So their concern is, and I'd be, I'm interested how you're going to answer this. 
you have a lot of confidence, a lot. And you not only have confidence in, everybody doesn't know this, but we're looking at each other through television cameras right now. So you're on TV, you know you're on, you act like you're on, you look <laughs> like you're on. And so that tells me that inside you, you're very strong and able to do this. Now I'm more casual than you are, you're very proper. And what I wanna talk about just for a minute and get your perspective, there can't be a wrong answer here. There is no wrong answer, it's your answer. And how do we convey, and the listener needs this, how do they convey to themselves that they really have permission to be successful? They don't have to listen to, I don't mean to, to be insubordinate to their husband, but they now have their own strength and they can do all these things. I'm telling you right now, 63% of my clients are women and they make the most money. That's awesome. All right, so that's the good part, but they're shaking in their boots. Well, fear is the thing that happens right before something great does. So that's just good. be willing to walk through the fire. Yeah. So you have two choices when you walk through fire because fire is going to come at you. You can turn into ashes or you can be stronger than steel. Those are your two options that happen. And I think the challenge is just from a cultural perspective is we were always taught to be the weaker being. And it, but what's funny is I have found the more that I find myself and really explore that, how powerful I really am. And people read it and it's the scariest thing, but it's really liberating and, and incredible. But understand to get where I'm at today, it's been extremely painful. Wow. All right. So now tell people where you are today and talk a little bit about the pain and tell people a little bit about this journey. It's a journey, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That was an emotional, yeah, everyone. If you didn't get it, we didn't tape it that way. That's an emotional, yes. Okay. Without getting too deep and going through the, all the crises, first tell people briefly where you are today because you have a big company. This is no small company. All right. Of so it's a big company. Tell them a little bit about that and tell them how some days you were scared I start this with an I, itless. <laughs> itless. <laughs> mm-hmm. I started the company. I didn't have any money. I, mean, I started it using other people's money. It's all about using other people's money and time, right? right. But the funny thing is that money memory I told you about, I already knew what nothing was like. Like we were losing everything. I wasn't even going to be with my family because there wasn't enough means to take care of all six of us kids. It was that destitute. And then look where I ended up. So it was really, so I just started the business knowing that I needed to, to do this. And I, I didn't know what it was going to be. I didn't really know, I had an idea of what I was trying to create. But until you go and do it, it's, you're just testing different things and finding what the market's given to you. And now, now that I have put myself in a situation to be, find who I really am, my business has never been better. So the one thing I can't stress enough your business is just a mirror to your soul. If you're, whatever you're facing, whatever, that could be good or bad or whatever, personally or professionally, your business is going to reflect that. So you, in order for your business to flourish, you have to, you yourself have to flourish personally. And I say that, and I'll explain why I'm at where I'm at. September 4th of last year, my sister Mandy, who was our, the one in a million survivor of her disease and that kind of started the whole thing when I was young, um, she was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. And uh, 12 hours later, my mom went into septic shock. And we lost her three weeks after that. And so during that 60, 90 day period that my sister was basically in isolation, we were taking care of our two little girls. And through that, I've, I've always, I grew up, I told you really religiously, went through a controlling environment growing up. And so that's what I married and I couldn't figure out, I do all this speaking all across the country. And I saw my performance coach who happens to be a psychotherapist. I'm like, why can't I connect with my audience? I, I just, there's a disconnect. I feel like there's this wall that you can't see that no one, I, it's just, I'm like in this prison and people saw it. And I look back at my eyes and throughout my entire marriage, I just, it's like this fear and I, I never saw it. But when you lose, I knew when my mom took her last breath, I knew it was the last time that someone was, was going to love me that way. So it really had me looking and doing some real soul searching of what it was going to take to truly find happiness. And I didn't care what it was because 
when you get dumped like you have throughout my life, my sister was supposed to walk, talk, graduate high school. I helped her through with, with all of that. You know, it's just, you just make things happen, right? And, and so I'm like, I, I'm willing to go through any of that pain. And so that meant me making a decision about my marriage that I was raised not to do, and that was leave my ex. And honestly, as difficult as a decision that was, I've never been happier and my business has never been better. Wow. So I'm not promoting divorce. I'm definitely not doing that. I am love with love. Like it's, I think it's a beautiful thing, but it should never be tied to you. Just, you need to put yourself, I don't care if it's things or relationships or whatever it might be, or just how you were trained and how you think you need to release whatever that bondage is you have within yourself to allow yourself to find true happiness. And when you find that and it's with yourself and it's unwavering, nothing will stop you. Molly, I give my clients permission. Will you give them permission? Of course, yes, please. <laughs> I want people to experience where I'm at today, for sure. Okay, so your life changed. You went from all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up. You've had a, you've had a few cycles there. That's, that, 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 gave you, that gave you a whole new strength too, didn't it? Yeah, that's just life. I just prefer it to maybe happen in smaller doses than when it has happened. Okay. <laughs> I donated, yeah, I donated my stem cell to my sisters. Thank God she no longer has leukemia. But I mean, that's all happened within this like yeah. 12 month period. It's a lot. That's a lot, no doubt about it. Okay, so let's go back to business and then we're gonna button it up. But uh, tell young people and tell um, my minority clients as women are referred to, I don't know how they're minority, they're the majority in the world, but anyway, tell them. Uh, the what, yeah, there's no doubt about that. I mean, <laughs> I'm not arguing, I'm not, I, I rarely hire men, I'll tell you that. You, you saw the one and only one, you just saw him a minute ago come in here. Uh -oh. I, said, I know I hire women a lot because they, they, they you tell them how you're gonna grade them, which is simple with me. I just I only grade them on results. I don't care about anything else. And okay. they know that. So they just tell me what the result is. And that's all I wanted to know anyway in the first place. So mm -hmm. I don't get all emotional about it. I just say, is this the result? And then I get real emotional if it isn't. But the, <laughs> the point is, the point is uh, I need you to tell the women that I work with your advice on how to be strong and how to run a business and just capsulize that in a couple of minutes. You don't have to give a, a college course on it. Just give what you feel from your heart that they need to do. You've done it and you've done it a bunch of times. You did it in life and you've done it in your business and you're probably just getting started. Aren't we all? Yeah. Honestly, for me, my experience has been, I'm gonna speak from that, has been just being able, like I said, having that clarity of purpose has been the one rock that I have just coveted, the, just held close to me the entire time. Because I don't care if you're male or female, there's going to be people that tell you you can't do whatever it is you're going after. And although you need to have the market and some input to guide that path, if that fire is there, then nothing else can waver with it. I don't know how many, probably the best motivation for me has been someone telling me I can't do something. Oh boy. Okay. So there's a little stubborn streak in here, a little stubborn streak. Uh, maybe, a, maybe a big uh, one. We'll keep it tiny. It doesn't okay. really exist. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay good. Yeah, you... No, I think it, it's just owning that I've had and probably, and being able to put yourself in the fire, in the lane of fire, and, and understand that what's on the other side is so beautiful. Because despite all the pain that I went through the last year, my ability to find the beauty in that pain is where all my power has come from. Wow. So don't look at the, the crap that happens in life because we not none of us get out of this unscathed. Don't look at that as woe well, me or I can't do this because I'm here. No, I'm literally having the best months, year, month over month in revenue, despite going through what would shut most businesses down because they have their revenue solely attached to them. If you and understand and build a, a value system that it extends you, then that's really what a dynasty is. It's something that is beyond who you are and lives whether or not you're alive or in that, that space. Um, so I think just for me, it's just having that ability to have that confidence um, to that it's okay if this thing completely falls apart, but I wanna keep moving forward and see where this thing takes me. It's okay. I think the biggest thing is acceptance of failure. 
Wow. It's okay to fail, right? More than okay. Actually, it's the best thing. Uh, okay. Whether or not you like the guy, what Trump filed bankruptcy three times and now he runs the country and, yeah. and is a billionaire. Like him, hate him. That's a wonderful example of being okay and falling on your face. Okay. We just learn from the lessons, though. I, I narrow cast it to fail forward fast. <laughs> That's right. You got it? You got it? Okay, so let's tie it up. To make this worthwhile for you, I want you to give me one minute about the company you built, and then I want you to slowly give an address where they can get the freebie that you want them to have. Is that sure. okay? Okay. Yes. And, and then I'll just, and then I'll button it up. Perfect. In order for you to find out more about how you can build your dynasty, of course, you can sign up for our buildyourdynastybook.com, and, and that will be coming out October 1st. Uh, our book if you want to find out more about that but if you just need some time saving resources if you just need a quick hit then go to buildyourdynasty.com forward slash ted ted and you'll be able to download all those resources and we'll get that out to you and probably most importantly through that is it's going to give you an option to just have everything stress test if you're worried about where you're at now and being able to get where you're trying to go and you're Sounds, Wally, that, that sounded like a really great concept, but I have no idea on how to drive that bus. Then there's going to be an option for you to do a stress test. And just go, like I said, to buildyourdynasty.com or slash TED, and then you'll be able to uh, get all that wonderful information that I know is going to add tremendous value to all of your audience. That was terrific, but now tell us why you're qualified to teach us. Okay, sounds great. My background, as I said, is a recovering actuary. I, I did that for a number of years working on pension plans from, from the largest sizes and I, as well as spending over about 14 years in the planning industry as well. But my specialty, of course, is family business owners. Most people get their education and they go to school and then they learn everything from a book, which I did that, that's great. But in reality, business doesn't work that way. It comes in real life experiences. Not only am I a business owner, I was raised one at the young age of five. I saw what works, what doesn't work. I, and I work with that on a daily basis. We've helped hundreds of business owners be able to do things in a real life perspective. And we don't teach anything that we don't do internally. I'm also a certified business exit consultant, one of 200. And that we help all across the country. And so we have clients all over. And then I also have, we have, we're one of seven percent of all wealth of firms that have wealth management that practice all the different fundamentals of wealth management. So essentially, like I said earlier, just capsulating it in a virtual family office to make it simple and elegant. So you, all you have to do is run your business, and we help you bring the best ideas to you. So all you have to do is make the decisions, not learn how you actually got there. Uh, thank you. You did a terrific job. Now let me just give you two minutes about Ohio. Okay, I won't even take that long. Okay, this little sheet, I, I just had to pull up some information. Okay, you have a lot, you have a lot of counties. I used to fly from Orlando to Cleveland Hopkins Airport, and I would go to the tax auctions. Now, I know the east side of Ohio, the east side of Cleveland is a mess. The west side's where all the rich people live, and it was pretty easy to figure that out after a very short period of time. I'm just going to give you a number. I was just shocked myself. Okay, we just asked them. Ohio sells two things. They sell tax liens and tax deeds, okay? A tax certificate, you can make cash money on from the local government. In, in the county of Cuyahoga, I hope I say it right. Yeah, don't okay. This is staggering. 14,000 properties they're gonna sell at auction. Now, wow. have a great weekend. You did a terrific interview. Hi, it's Linda. Make sure you check out the free training webinar that's on tedthomas.com. Again, that's tedthomas.com, and you can learn more in-depth about tax lien certificates and tax-defaulted properties.